Hey guys, Mel the Terrain Tutor back in the naughty corner with a bit of a back to basics guide for you. And in this back to basics guide, what we're going to be doing is looking at how to put house paint through an airbrush. Okay? Now, a couple of things before we get stuck in. Obviously, this is a back to basics guide, therefore, it's part of the back to basics series, a series of guides designed to teach you not how to build specific terrain, but to cover a variety of techniques and materials that are common to terrain building, and essentially to give you the skills that you need to build whatever you want. Okay? So, the link's up there, go check it out. I'm sure there'll be something of interest in there for you. Oh. Oh. Now, you notice this is a bit of a video on airbrushing, yeah? Uh, you'll also notice a bit of an airbrush picture there. That's not mine, that's the wife's, Kez's, yeah? That's her first attempt at airbrushing. Don't you hate talented people? You know what I mean? Right, I'll get stuck into what I can do, eh? Okay, <laughs> splash some paint on. Right, okay, we've got house paint here. Now, uh, I've only been airbrushing for about two years, so there's two key facts that I want you to take from that. One, I don't consider myself any sort of airbrush master or airbrush teacher, okay? But in those two years, yeah, I have put a phenomenal amount of house paint through what of my airbrushes. So I'm pretty competent at doing that and what I want to do is just basically take you through everything I've learned along this year, two year process to sort of save you having the same problems that I've gone through when, when you give it a go, if you decide to give it a go. Now secondly, the other thing I want to take you take that from that is I've been doing it for about two years. I've been building terrain for over 20, okay? So an airbrush is in no way essential to terrain building. Don't think you've got to go out and buy yourself a compressor and a professional airbrush. You don't. Yeah? All the stuff you've seen on my channel so far, brush work, sponge work, okay guys? So don't think that you need an airbrush. That being said, yeah, like a lot of artistic tools and mediums, they can only improve your work. Well, we've got a, a sort of handle on, you know what I mean? Okay. So, we've covered that, we've covered that, yeah. I think the best thing we can do is let's talk about some paint, eh? And where is applicable? Come on, come on over to the desk. Okay guys, as you already know, we sort of use all sorts of paints in terrain building. Yeah, we use model paints, we use craft and artistic, artistic acrylics. Yeah, we use emulsions, yeah, uh, house paint, uh, latex paint if you're in the US, guys. Yeah, and they're all good and they all have the purpose. Now, the reason why we sort of move into the emulsions as terrain builders is simply volume of paint. When you're, building te when you, when you're covering a 6x4, when you're doing lots of buildings, you're using a lot of paint. And it just does, makes these sort of things unviable. So we tend to, you know, go for the tester parts. We tend to go for the small litre tins. And if you're a proper, you know, full-on terrain maker, you buy five litre tins. Okay. But I want to quickly talk to you about these sort of paints with regards to airbrushing. Now model paints and uh, professional paints like these, these are Badger's Minotaire and Sterilize uh, primers, really really good, yeah? Designed to go through uh, Badger airbrushes and airbrushes, yeah? They work straight out of the bottle, yeah? They're brilliant. But volume wise they're not suitable for anything other than detailing work, okay? So we can't really use those for bulk terrain. Yeah? which moves us into the, uh, the acrylic department, okay? And in the acrylic department, they call into two fundamental camps, yeah? You've got craft acrylics, okay, and artist acrylics. Okay, the difference being is craft acrylics, uh, they're made for kids and people messing around with it, yeah? Consistencies can vary. I mean, look at this. Two bottles, two tubes of acrylic green, sap green. They're not even the same colour or anywhere close, okay? You... You can get them to run through airbrushes, but you, you, consistency and making sure it works right every time can be a bit challenging. So when it comes to airbrushing, you, know, you really want to start favour the artistic acrylics. And the reason for that is they're designed to, to a specific recipe, to a certain consistency, yeah, because they're used by professional artists. And on top of that, yeah, uh, the companies who make them, like Winsor Newton and all the other companies, yeah, They'll have professional thinners for them and how to thin them down to put through airbrushes. Okay? So they're designed to be worked with, you know, thinners and things like that. So stepping up if you're doing, you know, a reasonable bit of amount of work, you know, we like these. But like I say, for our bulk work, and what I'm talking about now is mainly, you know, your base coating stuff. Okay? Getting your colour down 
quick. You know, your, your subtle shadings, those sort of things, okay? We move into the house paints. Now, you already know that we love house paints. I love house paints, yeah, for train building. But there's a bit of a problem with house paint, yeah? During the development of house paints, okay, I am pretty damn sure that no sort of paint chemical engineer sat around the table and went, what if someone wants to put them through an airbrush? That conversation never happened. I'd put money on it. That conversation never ha happened. And so putting them through an airbrush is ex has challenges, okay? They're very thick. They, they glue together. I'll talk about the challenges in a minute, to be truthful, yeah, as we go through. But the purpose of this video is going to be showing you how I cope with the challenges they present. Okay, so I think the next best thing we can do yeah, it's really just get stuck in guys. Yeah, so what I'll do is we'll get some paint We'll get the airbrush together and we'll do some spray and I can talk to you about the challenges that this paint faces And then we'll go into sorting them out and mixing up and all that sort of stuff. Let's crack on eh? Now before I start showing you how to mix it up and how to troubleshoot problems and that sort of stuff as you go in you know, and best tips What I thought I'd do is I'd quickly show you uh, The difference between the consistency we have to use emulsion paint at Okay, and normal airbrush consistency. Yeah, so what I've got in here is I've got my Flintstone. Yeah, it's already been sort of pre-mixed and watered down. It's in a little plastic dropper bottle you get them from eBay. It's got a marble in as an agitator. Yeah. And, yeah, we're just going to put a couple of drops into here. Yeah, if you see, yeah, that's the sort of consistency. Let me put a drop there. Yeah, you can sort of see. Yeah? Okay, now, if I pump that out, and I'm pushing out about 30, 35 psi working pressure, and all I'm going to do is push it out there. Yeah, and you can see, works fine. So, now the thing I want you to take from this is notice how it looks a bit wetter than normal airbrushing. Yeah? So, if I get my finger now... Yeah? Do you see how it's wetter than normal airbrushing? Okay? If I come back up here and really blast it out, and give that a second. What you'll notice, if you can, yeah, is that the moisture has been drawn away, and there's quite a bit of moisture in here, to be perfectly honest. Okay, and the reason for that is that the paint is so thick that you have to go over the top, yeah, with moisture to get it through. The problem is, if you go too much over the top with moisture, yeah, so I'll quickly flush that out, yeah. Now, the solvent for this is just water. Okay, so I'm just going to flush it through with a bit of water and that'll be fine. Yeah, I'm just blowing it into a jug. Yeah, and there you go. Right, if I just put that down for a second. If we get a mix, okay, put in our paint. Yeah, and you can see how sort of thick it is in that. Yeah, see how slowly it runs. Okay, we add a little bit of water and we mix it up to what we call, yeah, or what they say for airbrushes is the consistency of milk. Yeah, I mean that's a little bit thicker than the consistency of milk. Another drop. Okay, so... There you go. Oh, to the camera, Bose. There you are. Okay. Assuming that's focusing. Right. If we put this in our airbrush, yeah, which is airbrush consistency, okay, what they recommend, and we start spraying this. Look at the moisture in it. Yeah, do you see that? To see how much moisture is there, let me move that tin. There you go. The fragile tape doesn't help, does it? But you can sort of see. 
how much moisture is in this. So, if I come across to something like a rock, okay, I've got to go really slowly because very quickly, yeah, it becomes like a wash. Yeah, see that? See how it's running away? Yeah? It's simply too thin. Now, that means that if you thin it down to what they recommend for putting through airbrushes, yeah, you're going to have to do typically about three or four coats just to get a base coat on. Yeah, and trust me, it's, it's frustrating, but it will go through, and it will continue to go through, it's easy to clean, yeah? If you want to go thicker and work a deeper shade, you know, a, you know, a more opaqueness to your airbrushing, then you need to put it in at the thicker ratio, okay? So, that presents a few problems, okay? Because obviously it's thicker, yeah, it really does gunk up inside. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to, what's best, shall I show you the trips and the gunking or let's mix them up. Uh, let's show you the gunking. Right, what I'm going to do is bang out a load and gunk this up a bit. Yeah. Now, when you're airbrushing, yeah, let me just blow that out. Yeah. When you're airbrushing, there's a tendency to fill the cup right up and just crack on. The problem is, because we're airbrushing, yeah, what happens is that paint sits in there for ages and ages and ages, yeah, while you're doing your airbrushing. And it all starts to thicken up at the bottom. You start pulling the thick stuff through the bottom, yeah, through the airbrushing, and it gunks up. Okay, so my recommendation is if you are using emulsions and you're running them thick, yeah, run them in little bits, okay? So, Couple of drops in, get the bit you need to do. Yeah, run it through, yeah. Every so often, I'm doing it now, I, just, I don't need to do it now, but every so often, yeah, run a bit of cold, cold water through it. The solvent is cold water after all, so it'll be fine, yeah. Yeah, that just flushes it through and then whack in a little bit more paint and crack on. Now it may seem, it may seem a bit sort of long-winded to keep having to top up, okay? But the benefit is, and you can go, if you're really whacking it out, you can go to sort of half a cup. Don't go above half a cup, yeah? But the benefit is that as you're whacking it out and as you're little topping it up, you're not clogging it up, which means you're getting a far finer spray, yeah, you can push it out if you need to. Let me just pump this lot out and then I'll show you the gunking. Good to hear. Okay, guys, right, you can see straight away where we've done it with the thicker emulsion. Yeah, we've got a far nicer coat on that than sort of at the consistency they recommend at what you call it, uh, consistency of milk. Right, so I've blown a little bit through. Yeah, I can normally put a lot more through than that, but I just want to show you something. Yeah, now I'm going to have to bring this up, I'm going to have to dismantle my airbrush in front of the camera. Okay, now take off the front nose assembly, and then inside, there yeah, you will have a cone and a needle. 
okay so there's your cone yeah there's your needle yeah now air comes out of here it goes round that cone and sucks the paint out and how much paint comes out depends on how far back that needle is pulled now if I take this cone off look at that yeah that's how gunk that needle has got already yeah that is very different to airbrush what you call it to airbrush paints okay if that was an airbrush paint I'd expect that to be you'd see metallic even with that little amount okay so you can imagine how as you're going along and you're whacking it out and your base coating buildings that very quickly gunks up yeah so tips for managing that first off top up frequently but don't fill up okay do flushes ie yeah get your water couple of drops in when you get to the bottom just flush it through yeah finally there's a little tip and I haven't got any wet rag fool 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 boats right let me just put a bit of water on there you'll see why in a second now prior to this I was sort of doing it cock-handed yeah we're by sort of drawing the needle back and putting my finger on and all sorts of things but there's a technique when you're cleaning your airbrush called back flushing okay and back flushing involves blocking the airflow at one side drawing the needle back and pushing air through because it can't come out of here it goes around that cone and back in and it forces everything that's thick back out yeah into the cup and it's a good way of clearing blockages but you can do what I call a field flush yeah now typically you do back flushes when you're washing yeah Ken at Badger gave me this tip for these because they're they don't have pinch tips they don't it's quite challenging to grip them yeah a little bit of water say one or two drops yeah okay and you could only a couple of drops on this because if <laughs> it's otherwise trust me you'll cover yourself in paint yeah pinch the front with a damp cloth with these or, or you'll use a pinch tip yeah let the air go out and bubble it and you see how it's bubbling that's why you don't put loads of water in you'll cover yourself yeah but what you're doing there is you're forcing all that paint out yeah do that yeah throw the excess into a jug flush yeah and if I open this needle again come on baby that's it Knocking me jug over. Yeah, I'll take that out. Yeah, a marked difference on that. An absolute marked difference. It is nowhere near as thick. Okay, it is ready to put paint through. Yeah, that isn't gunked up at all. Yeah, so that's called a. I'm calling that a field flush. Yeah, I don't know if airbrushers do it. I haven't seen it. It's just what I sort of do to sort of speed it up when I'm doing lots and it start if I, I notice the airbrush is starting to hesitate yeah that's when it, it literally is I'll force out what paint I've got out of it yeah damp it yeah push it out clear it out give it a flush through and then I can crack on and it's a lot quicker than having to take it and clean it properly you know take it over to the sink clean the needle etc because you're using the same color okay so that's the basic principles of pushing uh, what am I saying now? Bose, get your words in order. I'm all over the place today. It's all right. I'm a little bit excited. I've been to see an artistic space to, today, and I'm really excited about it. So I'm sort of bouncing. You know, so sorry if I've been a bit, you know, edgy and all over the place. It's just one of those things, isn't it? So take a deep breath and get yourself together, Bose. So guys, really simply, yeah. You can now see why it needs to be thicker the normal what you call it the normal airbrushing paint yeah because you can't get that opaqueness yeah without a th thickening it up but because it's thicker it's more prone to blocking yeah and the paint is designed to glue together yeah it will literally I mean it's thickening in this so quickly and that was the really watered down mix okay it's designed to do that it's designed to protect your walls okay so we've got a cope with that and coping with that that simply means making sure you know when we when we top up 
we shake a bottle so it's the right consistency. We do what you call it, flushes, you know, every so often. We do field flushes and back flush it every so often. We only top up little amounts. We don't use a full cup sitting. Okay, simple as that. Yeah. Now, next up we're going to talk about mixing paints. And what we're going to do is, I've got a couple of black tester pots here. I don't have a black paint mixed up, so we're going to do it first time. And I'll take you through the process. Because the, the issue is, none of these paints have been designed for airbrushing, so every single one can be different when it comes to airbrushing. Yeah, so, I'm going to take you through the sort of markers I use to figure out, is it thick enough? Is it thin enough? Yeah, will this work? Okay, guys, so, I'll get cleaned up, and we'll get back with a bit of mixing. See you in a sec. Okay, guys, hopefully after that sort of rambly bit, sorry about that, guys, you should have a better sort of handle on why you need emulsion to be thicker than normal sort of airbrushed paints, okay? And you should have a sort of a handle on the inherent problems of the thickness that causes when airbrushing and a few little tips to sort of like handle it as you go, you know, the back flushing, the flushing through, you know, topping up only what you need, etc. Yeah, just a quick word on that. You can actually fill the cup to the top in one go but I'd only recommend it if you're doing one sitting if you intend to keep topping it up and that sort of stuff don't keep with the low measures okay guys right now you've got a handle on it I'll take you very quickly through the mixing process and the testing process as I said emulsions aren't designed yet to go through airbrushes so consistencies vary considerably yeah from pot to pot brand to brand yeah so I'll show you, I'll give you a couple of pointers yeah on mixing it up and knowing when you've got the right sort of mix right we're going to do black because I haven't got a black yet so let's crack on yeah first job yeah we're going to empty I mean you're not going to put that through an airbrush anytime soon are you well we will in a couple of minutes yeah, let's drop that in yeah. nasty pop this one now yeah, this one's a little bit better See, it, it, it drips a bit. Come on, let's get that in there. Come on. Now, you may say, shouldn't you scrape those out and get more out of them? Nah, I'll throw some water into them and make them into a black wash. Get the, get the sort of remnants that way. It's easier and quicker for you guys. Right, so put those over there out of the way. So we have our black paint. Okay, about that much of a cup. Yeah. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour probably about two, three mil flow aid in there. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Winsor and Newton's Artistic Acrylic Flow Improver. Remember, emulsion paints are acrylics. Yeah, so it works fine with them. Yeah, I've diluted mine down to a one to twenty ratio. A bottle like this will last you forever. Yeah, but dead simple. A couple of mil. Go on, there you go. Yeah. Now. I found flow aid is pretty essential, yeah? Now, you may not want to put out for the expense of it, but my recommendation is put out for the expense for it, yeah? It makes a vast difference. I mean, look how gloopy that is. The next job, yeah, is to start topping it up with water, okay? And what I do is I put in a layer, Ooh, spraying everywhere, it's like a Saturday night, yeah? Just a layer. Yeah, and then start mixing that backwards and forwards. I do not fill it with like a centimetre and try and mix that in. It's too much in one go. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm very going to quickly mix this up and see if I can get this to airbrush consistency from that. Okay, so cue the music. And here we have it guys, that is roughly the right consistency now, yeah, just thick enough, okay, the trick to tell is when you pour it in, if the ripples disappear almost immediately, yeah, that's the moment I find that it's best to go through, now remember we've got to troubleshoot this, so next job, 
Let's put some through an airbrush. Yeah. So very carefully. Yeah, I'll just put a couple of drops in without making a, a horrendous mess. Yeah, and there you go. Now we'll come over to our, our board without tape now. See so yeah, how I improved the quality again. Yeah, and perfect. Right, as you can see, it's going through nice. Yeah, I'm not getting any excess moisture. Okay? Yeah? Not like when we did flush with that one. So, let's see how long it flows for. And if you look at the bottom, yeah, you see a little bit of metal, so it's not glooping, yeah. So, I would say we've got pretty much perfect consistency there. Now, okay, let's see what happens if we add a little bit more water, yeah. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, bit of black paint, yeah, not the flow improver, dude. Yeah, a little bit of water, yeah, just a couple of drops, mm. give it a mix, okay, and this is back down to that sort of consistency of milk thing again, yeah, and if we put it through at the consistency of milk, Yeah, excess again to get a decent coverage. Yeah, do you see? Whereas, let me just throw that. Feel flush. If we put it in at our proper consistency, a couple of drops. Yeah, throw that round. Obviously, blow out the excess water from the start and then... Yeah. That's the consistency of milk. That's our thicker ratio. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. It's as easy as that to mix up. Yeah, remember your pointers. Remember to watch or look for excess moisture when you're doing it over cardboard. When you, when you spray over cardboard, the moisture will get sucked away. Yeah, into the sides. Okay, so you'll be able to tell if you've got excess moisture. Alternatively, any sort of rocky rock, something which would run bits over. Yeah, run it over that. Yeah, have a look. Yeah, if it is runny, it's too run it's too thin you need to thicken it up yeah that should let's wrap this up hey eh? because i think yeah you're good on mixing now obviously all i've got to left do with that is just pour it into that put an agitator in it and we are good to go really good to go i like this black it's really nice it's shiny right let's wrap this up and relax Sorry I've been hyped up on this one guys, like I say, loads of good things going on, you know what I mean, so I'm in a bouncing mood, yeah, so it keeps me on edge if you know what I mean. Right, there you go, that's a roundup on using emulsion paint, yeah, uh, this especially applies to sort of terrain builders, you know, the guys who are putting out volumes, if, if you're getting together with, you know, your club and you want to do a load of terrain and one of you's got an airbrush, yeah, then this is the sort of information for you. What I'd really like you to take from this is, above all, Understand that these paints are not designed to go through an airbrush, okay? So, you've got to accept that they're different consistencies, they have different properties, yeah, they clump faster than airbrush paints, and you've got to be able to handle that. One, mixing it up and understanding, you know, what's too much, what's too little. Remember, you know, if you're wondering about consistencies, put a bit in, mix a little bit of water in there, take it, thin it, in the brush and see before you ruin your entire pot 
okay, and have to leave it out. If you do go too thick, okay, with what you call it, with, sorry, if you do go too thin when you're mixing it, yeah, leave the pot out, the, the paint will very quickly sit to the bottom and there will become a thin layer of water at the top. Tip your cup, pour it, pull the thin layer off very quickly, pull it back up, yeah, and then you're back to a thick density in about, it takes about five minutes for the process, okay, so cup of tea, thin, thicken it back down by pouring off the excess after it's settled. Okay, we've also covered a couple of little cheeky tips, one, the idea that, you know, for acrylic paint it's designed to wash with water, to, to dissolve with water, okay, it's designed to, yeah, yeah, household paint, sinks, etc. So, water is your, is your watch at solvent. Feel free to, you know, every so often, put a couple of drops in, just flush it through, it all helps. Remember that cheeky little pinch the tip and back flush, but don't overfill it, otherwise you're going to cover yourself in paint, like I've done a few times. Okay, uh, did it, did it. When it, we've talked about the topping up a bit, yeah, frequently, not too much. I think that about covers it. Right, guys, like I say, sorry it's been a bit all over the place, but hopefully, yeah, you've got two years' worth of plenty of cock-ups, to be perfectly honest, and screaming and shouting and, and cleaning my air. I mean, before I figured out the flow aid, I was cleaning it every five minutes. Keep away from the Chinese brushes. Whatever airbrush you go for, guys, keep away from the Chinese ones. Yeah, they're not worth it, no matter what you think at the time. Yeah, right guys, that wraps it up. So, as always, like it if you like it. If you've got a comment, if you've got any experience, if, you know, anything like that, any questions, in the comments. I always answer my comments, and it's a resource, guys, so remember, check out the comments. Finally, you know, listen, guys, if you really like what I do, yeah, and you want to help me with this, and this passion of doing this terrain tutorial stuff full-time, yeah, consider Patreon, guys. I know I only ask a dollar a month, yeah, but they really do all add up and it gives me this freedom, and it gives me this kit, and it gives me the ability to share this, what I've learned, what I know with you guys. Okay, so it's there if you're up for it. If not, doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll crack on regardless, but I'd appreciate it if you consider it. Right guys, uh, that wraps it up. In the meantime, I will say more interesting stuff coming in next week's tutorial. It may move to a Thursday depending on how quickly and timings and things like that. But in the meantime, I'll see you Sunday night. Nine o'clock works for us. See you then, guys. Live show Sunday. Ta-ra.